Hi guys, called Jibble in here. Um, so this is an update video um, about the situation in Gaza. Basically, um, I'm going to try and make these if I can. The people in Palestine right now, the people in Gaza are finding it increasingly difficult to be able to even contact the outside world, right? Because Israel decided that it was going to turn off um, the ability to use the internet. Okay, so just so you guys know, um, I'm going to be jumping in every now and then. Um, I know the quality is going to be really bad on this. Um, basically, I'm trying to research stuff. Um, and give you some sources as it happens because I feel like that would be better and I also don't want to like misspeak. So what I found here is this is a CNN article um, published on Friday, October 13th, 2023. Um, so Gaza's disappearing internet visualised. Over 2 million people in the Gaza Strip face complete isolation from the world with internet and power access shrinking as Israel continues to retaliate against Hamas atrocities. Internet access is hanging on by a thread after most of Gaza's telecommunication infrastructure was damaged or wiped out in Israeli airstrikes. The bombing campaign early this week destroyed two of the three main lines for mobile communication, leaving just one working but with disrupted service. Overall, connectivity in the Gaza Strip has fallen from about 95% in early October to around 58% as of Monday morning, according to data from Netblocks, an internet outage monitoring firm based in London. Um, and there's a graph here as well, which I'm going to put on the screen for you, hopefully, if this is working, to show the connectivity in the Gaza Strip. Uh, so we heard lots of uh, information from people in Gaza, like concerned that the internet was going to be cut off, lots of talk about that. And, um, and what I've got here is uh, the Spectator, index uh giving the breaking news this is october 13th that israel was set to cut off the internet connectivity in gaza from tomorrow so israel hasn't hasn't commented majorly on why it was going to be doing that um i believe since that time uh the power did go back on the internet went back on but the situation is um this is this is from bayan who's actually from palestine a uh, journalist from palestine the Gaza power plant stopped working days ago, yet some people use generators or solar panels to get a few hours of electricity, hence some internet. The cellular network is hardly working. At this rate, the entire strip, individuals and media outlets will go offline soon. So I just wanted to put that on the screen for you just so you get an idea of the situation in Gaza in terms of how they are able to communicate with us and how that is incredibly limited. Internet connectivity is pretty much non-existent they do not have power like the hospitals themselves are struggling for power obviously because they're under such heavy bombardment um a lot of their uh, amenities they use are destroyed and i wanted to um say this in the video as well because when we look at situations where there has been a, a bombing or a war crime for example you get a lot of very uh, reasonable in quotation marks journalists saying well we need to uh, you know we need to assess the information from all sides and of course in any normal situation that would be the case but we're looking at a situation where the Palestinian people quite literally have been denied that right so they're not going to be able to have footage they're not going to be able to talk about what happened so all they're all they're really going to have is their testimony so I hope you can kind of see the kind of skewed basis of, of that argument that people are using on this situation because they simply don't have the power to talk about what's going on it's it's depowered them in that sense i know there's going to be a lot of people when there's a catastrophe when there's a bombing they're going to say okay people are saying that but where's the evidence and that's what i wanted to emphasize here is that the power has been cut off the internet connectivity is very very poor this is a an active war zone this is a, a bombed area so for people saying oh that's that, that's just word of mouth how can we believe it I would say, like, I would say you're not going to get much better than that. And that's what they do in a time of genocide, right? Because they'll be demanding, well, prove it. And then they deny the people, essentially, the ability to prove that. I just wanted to, to put that in here. Okay, thank you. If someone isn't intending to break international law, and someone believes they are defending their people, right? And doing everything by the book. Not that you can occupy someone by the book. But, you know why are you then going to turn off the internet and additionally why are you going to starve the civilians and um deny them water and deny them medical aid wake up basically like you don't that's not the behavior of somebody who's going to act within international law when they're already breaking international law by occupying um and continuing to do so like that's that is not the behavior of a good actor in this right obviously not i i would have thought that was obvious um i've actually just filmed a video today um with heather so i've i'm heather mendick um i do the complaints on a podcast podcast with her um and daniel and we made a video um about the labor position on this israel uh 
Gaza situation. So we made that today um, and hopefully it should be going up fairly soon. Um, but it was good to be able to talk on that. But I think it's important to keep talking about it because the people who are able to speak from Palestine, people who are able to get in touch with their relatives, they are saying, please, please, please keep talking, keep posting. Do not let this become something that the media just accepts. And also, you know, let it not be that every day we hear that more Palestinians have died and it starts to become like a sort of thing that we're used to. Right, it must not become that. It must be an outrage every single time. So what I wanted to talk about very, very briefly here is the uh, bombing of a hospital. So that that's what I'm basically here to talk about. So the Baptist hospital in Gaza was bombed. And it's a hospital where um, there were patients, right? People who were seriously injured. Uh, people were, um, were uh, seeking sanctuary in there, right? Because in a time of war, so you might go into a school or a hospital or a place of worship. And in a, in a war, you, you would go and seek sanctuary there. So people who are sick or people with young families, people who can't move, right? Bear in mind, Israel has already told 1.1 million people that they, they have to move otherwise they're going to get bombed, right? Which they've got no right to do anyway, and they've already said that. Now, this hospital has said, and right, this is, right, Anglican Archbishop Hossam Naum, he says that the Baptist hospital in Gaza was called by the Israeli military three days in a row on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, warning them that the hospital would be hit by Israel. It was then bombed on Tuesday. I would also like to say that um, uh, Richard Sewell, um, let me let me get his information here so that I can I can show you this. OK, so uh, the, the very reverend canon Richard Sewell, he was a dean. He's a dean of St. George's College in Jerusalem. OK, um, so he reported on October the 17th that the Ali Arab hospital has taken a direct hit from an Israeli missile. Early reports say that hundreds of women and children were killed. This is a deliberate killing of vulnerable citizens, civilians. The bombs must stop now. There could be no possible justification for this. Now, if you go back uh through his tweets and i found this because he was being interviewed on one of the news channels i can't i think it might be bbc news i vividly remember as soon as i saw this had happened because i'm checking what's going on in gaza like as many times as i can in the day and as soon as i saw that a hospital had been hit i was watching the news and seeing this unfold now he said in that interview that the hospital had been hit a few days previously by an israeli missile right and i and i was like i'm sure he said that in the interview I am sure he did, because what happened later on is you had Israel claiming that they hadn't, in fact, targeted the hospital. Now, that in itself is strange because you've had accounts claiming that they did have something to do with it and then that got deleted. Um, but no, of course, they are now saying it was a Hamas rocket. But anyway, so I'm just going to just find you what... Um, I'll put it on the screen so that you can see it, right? And I just want to like be really clear about this. Richard Sewell, right? He, he's got no reason to... Like, he's just a man grieving because the church, you know, the hospital he cares about and the cause he cares about, you know, the loss of human life is upsetting to him as a good human being, right? He's not, he's not there for any sort of agenda, right? He's trying to do what he can to help. Now, his, his statement about this as well, I should say, he's had to make a statement because he's getting attacked because people are saying, oh, how could you possibly know it was an IDF bomb? Like, how could you possibly say that? And it's like, an IDF bomb hit the hospital a few days before this happened, right? So all this rubbish on the news about, oh, Israel wouldn't target a hospital. Ultimately, right, whether or not this was an Israeli missile, which let's, right, if, let's just put this into context here. Israel is telling people, move because we're going to bomb you, right? You guys need to move because we're going to bomb. They have been bombing. They've dropped 6,000 bombs, right? They are heavily bombing every day. They've called up the hospital and said, oh, we're going to bomb you, you need to go. And the people are saying, we, we can't actually go. Now, bear in mind, lots of people who could go, there were like 6,000 people there to begin with. They went because they were like, okay, this is going to get bombed. But the people who couldn't go didn't go, right? Then the bomb hits them, right? A massive bomb. This is a bomb with a lot of power. And suddenly it's, well, let's not be too hasty and say it was a, an Israeli bomb. I'm sorry. I... <sighs> How silly of me, how silly of me that, that the people that rang and said they were going to bomb and told everyone to move because they were going to bomb and the people who have been dropping bombs, about 6,000 bombs, and have hit hospitals and have hit civilians and have hit schools and have been dropping white phosphorus and have been depriving the population of water and of, of food and electricity, right, and of fuel. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I, I'm sorry for the offence caused. How silly of me to assume that that was 
that was Israel. How could I have jumped to such conclusions under those circumstances? Come on, come on now. Right, I'm going to find this now. Sorry, I'm angry. Okay, so he, he commented, um, right, this is October the 14th. Awful news, Ali Anglican Hospital in Gaza City has just been hit by a missile. Thankfully, no one injured, but one of the floors in the diagnostic building was partially destroyed. Israel says it doesn't target civilians or non-military institutions, but it keeps on happening. Uh, and on the 15th, he updates to say that four of the hospital staff were injured in the attack and they're trying to get them to safety. Right, so this was a few days beforehand. So I do not understand, right? The, the media on this is driving me crazy. I, I, it's like everyone's lost their minds. So let's just let's just say that like by some mad coincidence the hospital that they said they were going to bomb and the place they have been bombing and the people they have been starving and bombing right and saying that the people there are animals and that um you know basically they're human animals and barbarians and it's what they deserve right you know those people let's just say let's just say that like it wasn't them that hit the hospital you know, I, I can't even, like, I can't even, it's so ridiculous to me, right? So, but say they didn't. Say that wasn't them. Say they didn't do that one. The world's now like, oh, all right then. Or, well, we can't necessarily prove it. Shame, really, you know, it would have been useful, wouldn't it, if we had more footage and more information. But unfortunately, just by some coincidence, the internet's turned off. So we can't really see what's going on. And a lot of the people that were there are obviously dead. So a lot of the Palestinians are dead. So I guess we'll just have to find out what the IDF have to say. It's okay, guys. They're, they're now saying that they didn't do it. And of course they never would. They, they wouldn't do it. So that's, you know, that's the best information we got, guys. That's the best information we got. It's ludicrous. But like, even if they didn't, even if they hadn't done that hospital, they've done other hospitals. They've hit schools. They've hit residential buildings. And they've done this for years. For years and years and years. People are no longer focused on the people killed in that terrible, terrible tragedy, right? It's just, well, you know, to be honest, to be fair, we don't really know what happened. So let's reserve judgment. Let's just reserve judgment. No, we don't need to re reserve judgment because even that aside, and it hurts me to even push that aside, everything else happening around it, like, like white phosphorus being dropped on kids. That's a war crime. That is a war crime. Uh, collective punishment. Geneva Convention, it is a war crime, right? You you can't do those things. Those are not, doesn't matter how much we're going to be gaslit by the Western media, by Biden and by Sunak, that little, he was in Israel today, little wimp, um, and Joe Biden, my God. Like, seriously, like, so many things I could say about Joe Biden, many of which are very offensive, and I probably shouldn't say, but I won't say it. I won't say it. But I just think he's, he, he always looks like he's about two seconds away from death, right? Is that wrong? Like, he, he always, always looks like he doesn't quite know what's going on. And he just gets wheeled out and he'll say something awful, you know. Oh, I hear, what's the, the other guys or something? Like, okay, okay, Grandpa, all right, sit down. Like, I don't even know. But you've got the, the West, like, gaslighting everyone. Gaslighting everyone on this. Let's not be too hasty. Let's not jump to conclusions here. You know, let's fact check. You know, but you're not fact checking, are you? Right? Obviously, this situation, even Israel realised they'd gone too far. Or not that they'd gone too far, but they'd been too publicly caught going too far. Hence the change on it. Okay? But they've done it before. So for our channels to sit there saying, oh, the IDF, the Israel, they wouldn't target civilians. They, they've said they wouldn't. As if that's enough. Well, they have. And they keep doing it. Like, has everyone gone nuts here? Has everyone lost the capacity? Like, I can't quite believe it. They're acting like everything was fine, everything was normal, and a random bomb dropped out of nowhere and dropped on a random building. And everyone suddenly started pointing in a way that was anti-Semitic. Like, oh, it was Israel. It was Israel who did it. But, like... The actual situation was, Israel told people to move. They were bombing that area. Their military commanders have openly said, right, they've openly said they are dealing with human 
animals. They're going to starve the people. They're going to deprive them. They are going to show them what hell is. They are using the language of genocide. They've been openly doing it. And for Biden and Sunak, they've been running along like, well, you know, we support you all the way. You know, of course we do. Like, of course they wouldn't really do anything like that. Obviously not. And then they do something like that. And it's like, oh, but no, they wouldn't do that. They're civilised. They're a civilised nation, of course, compared to these barbarians who are often brown, you know, these brown barbarian countries. Oh, no, no, but Israel's civilised. Israel wouldn't do it. Israel has been doing it. Israel has been doing it. They told the hospital they were going to bomb the hospital. They told the people to leave because they were going to bomb the area. They've been dropping bombs all over the area and they're still dropping bombs around that area. But it's like, oh, but did they really? Can we really point fingers? Can we really? Let's let's have some reasoned discussion and debate. I think that the Israeli state is doing enough right now anyway that we can safely say that whether or not they did bomb the hospital, which I would bet a lot, a lot of money on that they did, right? Even if they didn't, there is enough other stuff, right, that it's perfectly normal and in fact reasonable and rational to think, of course, they did it because they're doing all the other things, right? If I, every single day, spoke about how much I wanted to kill a particular person, right? I kept talking about it and I kept posting about it and then I actually put it into action. So I started doing it. I started hurting that person. I started doing it on and off, like, oh, I'm really gonna hurt them this time. And I went on the TV and I was like, I'm gonna do it. I'm really gonna do it. And I even said to them, you better not, sh you know, you need to move out of your house because I'm gonna kill you in your house that's what I'm going to do. So you're going to have to go somewhere. And they didn't go. And then the next day they found dead in their house, right? Who do you think did it? Who do you think people are going to think did it? Right? Is it... No, that's not even, that's not even a good enough analogy, right? Because this is, this is like the, the level of destruction being inflicted on Gaza, right? On the innocent people that are trapped in the Gaza Strip is ridiculous. And it's like, oh, let's not go too far now. Let's not go too far. These are people who make excuses for war crimes and chemical weapons being used on kids. But it's too far to assume that a bomb that they said they were going to drop might have been dropped by them. I don't know. I'm, I'm angry about that. I'm really, really angry about it. And I feel like I'm losing my mind because once again, it becomes... I did speak about this a little bit with Heather on the podcast, but like, it becomes who really dropped the bomb and let's examine the footage and how much how much oh what sort of bomb was it and what noise did it make and what does the idf say i would urge you once again to remember if nothing dodgy was going on there right and everything was by the book and of course you know israel doesn't target civilians and they wouldn't hurt civilians and they're there to help why are they starving the people why are they depriving them of water of medicines why are they turning off their power and their fuel why are they turning off their internet because that's the means to tell people what's going on. And if they've got nothing to hide, then why would they need to turn off their internet? Right? If they're going in there, they've got no beef with the Palestinian people. It's just with Hamas. Why are they hurting all the Palestinian people then? Like, why do you not want them to be able to contact the outside world? Because you guys are the saviours, right? You guys are going in to save them from Hamas, aren't you? So why, why are you turning off the power? Like, why don't you want them to talk to us? Don't you want them to tell us, like, how you've gone in to rescue them from Hamas, who is using them as human shields, right? That's the story, isn't it? ridiculous anyway okay guys i'm once again cutting in here because i found this right so this is from um han hanania uh, naftali right and this is the guy who uh, i showed you i should have shown you a, a slide which showed his initial uh claim that um the idf had hit the hospital which uh strangely changed um as it looked like the international community thought that was too far suddenly it became Hamas that did it but this is what this is what he put out Earlier today, I shared a report that was published on, on Reuters about the bombing at the hospital in Gaza, which falsely stated Israel struck the hospital. I mistakenly shared this information in a since deleted post in which I referenced it, referenced to masses routine use of hospitals to store weapons, uh, caches and conduct terrorist activity. I apologize for this error. As the IDF does not bomb hospitals, I assumed Israel was targeting one of the Hamas bases in Gaza. It is known that Hamas is using civilians as human shields. It is a war crime and a crime against humanity. This should be the focus. And as, as these people always do, it tells, he tells on himself, right? So this is, he's basically saying, he's, he's contradicted himself in this very statement and they do this constantly. It's ridiculous. Like, are people just completely stupid, right? So he says, oh, they didn't do it. However, oh, uh, we think Hamas does store uh, weapons and things in the hospitals, which is why they, why they would do it. 
Uh, but also they don't do it, by the way. Now, why would you need to say um, the thing about, oh, but we think Hamas does, does hide things in the hospitals? Because they're fully aware that when this is investigated, it's very, very, very likely that this is an IDF bomb, right? So they need to put in there. They can't just condemn it, right? If, if, this, was, if this was serious, if this was genuine, this post would just say, Israel does not target hospitals. The targeting of hospitals is abhorrent and we stand against it and we want, you know, we want this investigated because that's disgusting, right? That's not what's happening here. What you're actually seeing, if you look, and we talk about this in other videos about different dynamics, is you're seeing a preemptive kind of push for an excuse if and when it's found out that it was them. Why on earth does he need to put in here that, oh, um, Hamas actually routinely uses the hospitals to store weapons? Why would you need to put that in if you weren't thinking, oh dear, in the future, it's probably gonna come out that we did? He's already planting the cover story. It's unnecessary and it's just completely transparent, right? I hope I hope you can see that. I hope you can see that same as I can. I just wanted to talk about that, that situation and say that obviously it is a war crime. There's been so many at this point. It is so evil to target a hospital right? A hospital that's full of sick people, people receiving care, uh, you know, so you've got patients, but you've also got doctors, right? And medics who are trying to help, who've decided they're not going to leave their post because they've got patients. There were children sheltering in that school, right? We know that a lot of kids have died in that situation. And this is not the first time. This is not the first time. It happens in mosques, right? We've regularly seen, before Saturday even happened, we have seen Muslim worshippers being attacked, right? Being, being rubber bullets being fired at them as they go to worship in the mosque. This is just regular. That was before any of this even happened. That was what was going on in places that were supposed to be sacred and non-violent and people weren't supposed to be hurt. So what do you guys think is happening when they turn off the internet so people can't talk about what's happening, right? And they're really, really angry now, right? And they've got the support of little cowardly little weasels like Biden and Sunak and little Starmer we've got here as well. Like, what do you think they're being emboldened to do? Right? Open your eyes. Open your eyes. And I, I'm sorry that I'm... I try usually to be more gentle with stuff and like, but I'm so angry and I'm so tired. I'm so tired of, of going on Instagram or on Twitter or turning on the news and seeing more people are dead. More people are dead, more children are dead. You go on social media and it's like, people are putting trigger warnings on the videos of what's happening because it's so traumatic to us to, to witness that, which is like a daily thing that's going on in Gaza right now that children are having to experience, right? And I just feel so angry. I feel so angry I can't focus. I'm constantly checking. I feel... I... I... There is... Hell is too good for these people, right? Hell is too good for them, is what I will say, right? We're going to see a lot more propaganda coming out of the IDF. I also just want to say as well, I like, sorry, this is longer than I intended, but I, I wanted to bring something up here, an example. So you probably know about Shireen Abu Akleh, right? So she was a very, very famous Palestinian journalist, okay? So she was killed. She was killed by the Israeli Defence Force, as they like to call themselves. Um, right, she was shot by an Israeli soldier when she was covering a raid on the Janin refugee camp in the West Bank. And I would just like to remind people that this beloved person, right, she was very respected, um, very admired, very, like, I, 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 like, the outpouring of love for her, she was an iconic figure, right, she really was. Now, when she died, when she was shot, I just want to remind people, if, if you weren't people who were following this at the time, and this, you don't know much about the situation, the IDF tried to pretend that they had nothing to do with it, and she was actually killed by Palestinians. Right, so this, just so you know, for context, this is what they do. Now, it later turned out we know for a fact, we know for a fact she was killed by the IDF. But what happened? They put videos out like, oh, no, no, it couldn't have been the IDF because of angles or this or that, or they put weird footage out. But we know now, and that's a fact, that's not just me saying it's not conspiracy, that's a fact. We know they killed her and they covered it up 
and they blamed the Palestinians. Bear in mind, we know for a fact now it was the IDF. We know it was. As they often shoot people, journalists who cover who cover these raids, they often shoot people marching peacefully, right? Uh, the, the march of return, they, they will shoot you, right? They will use rubber bullets. It's, it's a regular thing that happens. Right, then they tried to say, they tried to say, oh, oh, Israel just wants to help the Palestinians. They want to help them find out who did it right you know we're gonna figure this out for you guys they killed her right she was killed by the idf and it was covered up they then said this our soldiers do not target journalists now can i just tell you they absolutely do there are so many instances it is just known they do so don't believe when they say oh we don't target hospitals i'm sure that's what they say but they also said they don't target worshippers right they, they say that they don't target uh, journalists and they don't target civilians or peaceful protesters, right? And they will kill unarmed children and they will take away little kids throwing stones at tanks because they'll be like, oh, they're grown terrorists. Let's take them away and terrify them. So I just want people to like bear in mind, right, that this is this is a established. If you haven't been following this situation for, for different for years, right, and you haven't looked into the history of this. I understand that you want to take people at face value, but you need to look at that history because this is a familiar playbook, right? It happens over and over again. And I also want to tell you this, right? So Shireen Abu Akhle, right? Again, she's Palestinian American, right? A loved figure, a loved broadcaster. She's not a threat. She's a broadcaster. She's a journalist. But again, they have no, they don't care about targeting journalists. They do that all the time. Then it was her funeral. Bear in mind, she's been killed by the IDF. Now she is carried in her coffin uh, by Palestinians. Right. It was a beautiful it was a beautiful thing to happen. Right. To carry someone on your shoulders and show your love and your respect for them. Right. And I still remember watching this happen. The IDF, the Israeli police. Right. They broke in. Right. They broke in. They burst through and started attacking the mourners. Right. The mourners were being attacked and trying to hold up the coffin of this innocent woman. Right. And you can look at this footage for yourself. Take a look for yourself. Go online and find it. I'm going to break in here again. Um, I'm going to put this footage in the video. Um, bear in mind there is violence in this video. I will, um, I will, I will tag this uh, accordingly. Um, so just be aware that I'm going to show the footage. Now this is going to be from the BBC. Um, the BBC, as you know, likes to see itself as an impartial broadcaster. I don't, I don't see it that way. But just to show you, like, I've used their footage just to show you that this is even what the BBC is covering of what happened, just so you you can see how, how horrendous this is. So please just be aware um, that um, it's gonna come up on the screen now. Okay, thanks. They nearly drop the coffin, right? Because they are being attacked by Israeli police at a funeral for a woman that was killed by the IDF, right? But of course, it's about fear, right? It's oh, we can't make this woman into into a martyr. We can't we can't let let them realise that you know oh no, we can be held to account for the stuff we do. No, we still have to make sure they're scared of us, right? The Israeli police also tried to prohibit the mourners from publicly displaying the Palestinian flag. Tell me how on earth that can be. This is a woman who is Palestinian, right? She's Palestinian American. Why on earth would she not be able to put the Palestinian flag on her coffin or to be held, right? When a British soldier dies, right? A British soldier dies and we, we, we often see, we often see that a British flag will be put over their coffin. Imagine being told you can't do that. Imagine being told you can't do that, but that is what they do because they dehumanise the Palestinians. We also find out from police footage afterwards that in fact it's even worse than that because security footage shows us, and this is verified, right, that police officers stormed the hospital building where her body was being held in a casket, right? This is a woman who has been murdered by them in a coffin, in a casket, and they're barging into the hospital to cause trouble. They threw stun grenades. They wounded and caused burns to medical staff. So when they say, this is why I'm bringing it around to this, right? When they say, oh, we don't target civilians, we don't target hospitals, we don't target journalists, they're lies. Those are just the things they tell us, right? So that people can look the other way and give them the benefit of the doubt and go, oh, I hope I haven't been supporting a genocide. Nah, they wouldn't do that because they're like us, right? They're Western, you know, like us, the US and the UK, we're the best places in the world, aren't we? Most democratic, wonderful places in the world. Um, you know, they wouldn't do that. Of course they wouldn't do that. They're thoroughly decent people, right? And, but this is the truth. 
that that's just the truth that's the reality that's not a conspiracy theory that that is a documented history of lying of targeting journalists and religious buildings and medical staff right i don't even know what else to say but i will keep i will keep talking about it but i, I wanted to talk about that in light of what happened um at the hospital and again it's going to become a situation of well we don't really know what's happened i have no doubt that like most likely there'll be so much more murder right and we've seen a lot more since right a lot more civilians getting hurt um but people will be focused on this they'll be focused on this one maybe maybe in the future when people have forgotten about it maybe they'll take responsibility right but i just want to say this even if and i'll say it again i think it's incredibly likely this is an israeli bomb right just common sense wise very likely to be even if it isn't this is something they do and have done so to anyone acting like oh don't jump the gun and assume they've done it they literally do it all the time and try and cover it up right but it's just that people in power right now don't have the courage they're cowards to stand up and say that and i don't even know why they don't have the courage to say that honestly i don't know why i'm seeing sunak and biden sitting there with netanyahu and well i say that but it's because you know let's be honest we, we're a colonial force right we're part of this situation let's not forget um it's it's awful but yeah we're going along with the facade and we're giving our power in the uk right and in the us and we're, we're allowing netanyahu to feel like he's empowered to do this so he can become more and more violent and lie and lie and lie because he has the backing of powerful states right what do the palestinians have right i know they have solidarity worldwide from the people but in terms of politicians in terms of literally being able to get their stories out the internet's been turned off they are being starved they are being they are dehydrated they're getting ill right they don't how are they supposed to even tell their stories right and then you expect us to sit there and believe what the idf says about it while they're bombing civilians and committing war crimes come on do me a favor right um i'm gonna go now lots of love thank you for watching and i will see you really soon for another update i'm praying as always that there's going to be peace that there is going to be no more innocent casualties no matter where they're from whether they are in palestine um whether they are in um, israel if they're palestinian or israeli like it literally i do not want a single innocent person to die right i just want this thing to be the palestinians des deserve their rights the war crimes have to stop and there has to be a solution which i don't even know at this point like there is a lot of trauma that's being inflicted on the Palestinian people. I don't know how they are going to even cope with something like that. But they need their rights, right? This only ends if people with power, right? The so-called good guys of the world, which I don't buy into at all, by the way, um, stand up to people. You know, they say Israel is a friend, right? We've got that. We've say that. We've got um, our opposition leader says that and our prime minister says that. Rishi Sunak and I can kiss Dharma brothers on this, you know, of course, cut from the same cloth. Um you know, oh, Israel's our friend. Well, I don't believe that at all, because if your friend starts hurting innocent people, I would hope you would have the courage to tell that friend that you must not do that and we're not going to support you in doing it, right? Even a friend you really love, right? You can say that you support somebody in suffering the tragedy that they've suffered, right? And that you mourn for the victims of that tragedy, 100%, and you feel that pain. But to, it's that's not friendship, is it? It's not friendship to basically involved in something which is going to let's be honest it's going to lead to a cycle of more pain in which palestine and the palestinians are going to be unchanged forever right and also so many innocent israelis so many more innocent israelis are going to be hurt until there is peace we need a ceasefire anyone who cares for human life we need a ceasefire right and that means holding people to account whether they're our friends or our enemies and i put that in quotation marks um I don't know but um thank you for watching and i love you and i will see you really really soon and i'm praying and i hope if you're religious you'll pray also and if you're not religious then i don't know whatever you can do to help medical aid for palestinians is accepting donations there's a gaza oxfam appeal please donate if you can keep talking keep posting um just do whatever you can okay i love you loads and i'll see you really soon love you bye